We're back with another podcast, guys, and today's podcast is always brought to you by Old Smokes Coffee. Go to oldsmokescoffee.com, use promo code NONTYPICAL, and get yourself a 10% discount off the best coffee money can buy. Smoked coffee and conventional blends. Check out Old Smokes Coffee. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Tacticam. Tacticam keeps sending us these awesome nifty little gadgets, and today I got my hand on a bow stabilizer mount for the Tacticam 5.0, 4.0, and Solo. This uh, black Tacticam stabilizer mount just screws onto any bow where your stabilizer goes, camera pops inside, it's nice and hidden, and it's there for you to share your hunt at any time. Go to www.tacticam.com and check out all their cool stuff. Okay, guys, trade show season is here, but this year there is no trade shows. So support your local Alberta Canadian companies. And uh, one to think of is Smith Game Calls. These guys have been supporting us for a long time. They make some of the best handmade calls money can buy right here in Alberta. Check out Smith Game Calls on Facebook, on Instagram. This is the Non-Typical Nation podcast with your hosts, Brody Teal and Eric Liberty. Let's talk hunting and absolutely everything else that goes with it. We're back with another one. We are back, guys. And uh, it is, what's the date today? We're yes. at March 31st. Yeah. So bear season officially opens tomorrow. That's right. Officially opens tomorrow and... Wolf, baiting wolf started season two weeks officially ago. closes. Yeah, wolf season's closed midnight today. or today at the yeah. last light. Um, I actually got a call from a guy today who downed a, a big black one oh, today. Right on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so sorry, wolf season doesn't actually close in the springtime. Baiting in certain zones for wolves closes. Yes, correct. Because um, as long as a big game season is open, that's right. Wolves yeah. are wolves are fair game. So you can still shoot wolves after today. Yes. But you can't bait in non-baiting bear bait zones for wolves. Yes, that's right. And the reason, obviously, why they do that is because you're gonna get bears. You're gonna get bears, right? Yeah. Um, just like they don't want you baiting in high populated grizzly zones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um and so, you know, technically you can hunt wolves all year round except for july and august those are the or no august, well end of august you could um, yeah it's, but the I guess only, it's only this... month the only full month with no hunting season so or big game season is july so june what 16th is, is the, when is first day of or sorry, 15th is the last day bear closes on the 15th yeah, yeah. so the from june 16th to august 24th yeah and so this year i don't know if you noticed i should have brought this up um, they extended a whole ton of black bear zones in Alberta to June 15th. Oh, okay. Um, was it south of the town or north or west that ended on um, the end of May? Do you remember that? I honestly thought they were all open till June. Okay, I think it was 510. Okay, maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah, that, so the archery zone. anyways, yeah. I'm not going to look it up on my phone because it's going to take me 10 minutes. But anyways, um, they actually extended the bear hunting season to June 15th for almost all of the zones, but a handful. So they did that, was it two winters ago for the fall season too? Remember okay. three years ago, they took away that November month? Five it's, or six years ago, I think. Was it that long that, ago? Or four yeah, yeah. or five, I don't know. I, I remember like I killed one you the killed first year I was guiding in the first week of November and it was obviously legal then. Um, and then I think the year after, maybe two years after. So yeah, I've been four or five years Just ago. Just last year they extended it, right? They Brought opened it back, back up. Yeah. Back, yeah. So you, you used to close, well, it used to always be the whole big game season right to the end of November, but you know, you're not going to really see a bear maybe the first week of November, maybe, you know, depending on the weather. But uh, yeah, for the last four or five years, it was closed in November. So it ended Halloween. And then last year, they just opened it back up again. Yeah, well, I think they're just realizing there's so many bears. Well, there's no reason to close it, right? Like, guys aren't going den hunting or anything, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I was actually looking. I just glanced at an article today they put out in Saskatchewan that 
2,000 bear hunters. They're going to have 2,000 less bear hunters in Saskatchewan this year because of no outfitting. Right. So they're, you know, and, and most hunters, I, I'm not too sure if they can take two bears or one bear, whatever it is, but they said on average there's, I think, 3,000 bears taken from non-residents. Mm-hmm. So a pretty high, like that's that's yep. a decent amount of bears. Yep. And you got to think, majority of that is going to be, you know, the the central to northern part of Saskatchewan. Um, and so now that's going to have an effect on other populations like Absolutely. moose yep. and elk and deer, right? Because um, there's been a balance of hunting with outfitter tags and resident tags everywhere in Alberta, BC, well, Saskatchewan. And now without that industry and without that, those bears being killed, there's going to be an influx now. And general public land is one thing, but these areas specifically like up north here in Alberta and up north in Saskatchewan where they're almost these areas like river systems and logging roads are monopolized by an outfitter. Yeah. Like they'll have like, I've worked. For, I worked for a guy that had fifty five baits running yeah. at one time, right? Mm-hmm. So we basically at that season we own the area, yeah. and he, he's hunted there for ten years or so. But if you shut those guys down, and they're just not working, yeah, just imagine the chaos of of you know just the bears not. That's not normal to them now. They no. don't have bait, and yes. I see what uh, you mean. So, yeah, so um, that outfitter's been there for, let's say, 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so every spring, those bears have a routine. They go find the baits. And and you know what? You're going to have most baits, you'll have three or four bears, five bears, or or 10 bears even, Mm -hmm. in some cases, hitting that bait. And you're going to take a select one or two, maybe from each one. And it's always always the big boy. So majority of the bears... That's just, they're just going for a buffet mm-hmm. and they're going to survive the spring. That's right. Majority of them now. And, and they're eating healthy because an outfitter can't afford all these like fancy goodies. You know, most outfitters are running oats, dog food, and oil and that's, pr- and beavers. And that's pretty, that's a pretty good diet. I mean, yeah. there's, you know, there's a little bit of shit in dog food, but if the bears are eating um, oats, that's, that's what they eat if they're on the farmland, right? Oh, they're, for sure. They're full of oats and yeah, that's by yeah. choice. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so it's not like we're poisoning them by baiting them or anything, no, right? No, no. And actually a fish and wildlife officer mentioned that to us, to us the other day, mm-hmm. how, um, you know, he sort of thought, you know, they should maybe look into implementing something, Something on the line, some of kind of boundaries, like a, a natural feed of some sort. But where do you cross the line, That's right. then? Right? Yep. Like, are buns natural? Is dog food natural? Is maple syrup natural? Is oh, what's natural? Right? Mm-hmm. So. You know, and well, yeah, and you can take it anywhere you want to go because processed rolled oats with molasses is not, <laughs> yeah, right? it's, it's not a little natural. different than picking it off the stalk in the field. So, yeah, but yeah, anyways, this spring, right? It's going to be well, even last spring with no outfitting, and that was like. No warning. I forgot about that. Right? So last spring there was no outfitting. Those guys this got spring, shut down. No outfitting. Mid baiting season, right? We the the border closed mid March, so yeah. guys were just they were getting stocking prepared. up, yeah. gearing up, getting vehicles ready to go, ATVs. Yeah. Some of those guys run big rigs to get their shit up yeah. north. Like, there's a lot involved, and and uh, it's just been shut down for yeah two, two and springs. a lot of outfitters. Um, you know, are just saying, I'm not guiding any residents at all mm-hmm. because this is my livelihood. And yeah, for a few thousand dollars this year, it could really harm me years down the road when I show them where I'm, you know, where, where I, I where I bait or where I'm hunting moose or whatever else. Um, but yeah, it's going to be different, right? It'll be interesting to see even how this year is, mm-hmm. you know, um, the areas where we hunt, I don't know if, as far as I, I don't think they're like the immediate areas where we hunt, like the 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 roads that that we have baits off of. I don't think those are hunted by outfitters. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. But they get hammered hard by residents. residents. Yeah. And the reason is is because they're easy access. Yeah. Well, and most outfitters that are going to run a system of baits, you know, you you got to camp, so you probably want to be on ATVs. You don't want to make be a way really away from. They don't want to run into anybody. Yeah. So they. Go and stick to an area, even if it's hard work to get in there and just have their own little... Yeah, because they're there together. all spring. That's right. Where you and I, 
unless except for a bear camp but we're typically you know we drive out there after work sit in the bait or we drive out there on a saturday and and, and we're limited and we to the back, so. we're limited to like the hour and a half circle that's feasible to do yeah on an evening right you yeah. can't drive three hours fill a bait and then drive three hours back and then have to go to work the next yeah, day because we got to keep that bait filled up every three days mm-hmm. or you know a couple times a week at least yeah. at least um but uh yeah, so, you know, it'll be interesting. Like, our immediate areas, I don't think will be affected too much because, like I said, not much for outfitter activity there, but there's a lot of a lot of residents that, that hunt there, Alberta residents. Well, I think, like, to the point of um, the outfitter areas being quiet the last couple of years, I think the resident areas, like the easy access areas, got hammered, hammered. last year. Yeah. Right? Like, how many people come into the shop, and we knew exactly by... They just told us where they were hunting and we're like, oh yeah. Yeah. And there'd be groups and groups (laughs) and groups and it's like everybody's just hunting the same spot. Yeah. Just south of town somewhere, right? But everybody's killing bears. That's a good spot. Everybody's killing bears. (laughs) You can't argue. a lot of bears back there, man. Yeah. Well, and you're super fortunate because you've got some outfitter tags in a a great zone too. Mm -hmm. Just west of Just outside of of town. Right. Um, and that's a spot and stock only zone. So those zones, like where we've killed bears in spot and stock only zones, they typically are larger bears, mm-hmm. you know, because if you go down to where we bait, um, I actually just went there this past weekend. I wanted to get ahead of everybody else, right? If, if there's a trail with no bait sign, if I get one on there and I get a bait, then I'm ahead of the ball. You like to think nobody's going to set up. I like you. to think <laughs> I got, I got, you know, I like to think that people are courtesy enough that they have enough courtesy that they, if they see a baiting sign, they aren't going to go intrude into that bear bait. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, yeah, where at least where I bait, there's freaking baiters everywhere. Right. But the spot and stock zones, um, they don't get hammered as hard because most people are baiting. And those baiting zones in the, and <laughs> There's so limited access, like we're talking about a handful or two of roads that we can really get within the town limits kind of deal, With, right? Within, within 45 minutes or an hour from town, there's about two or three major roads. Mm-hmm. And they're big, like there's lots of places to go, there's lots of land, but at the same time... Um, those those baiting zones have like an annual harvest, right? They get Bears get killed every year on them and these spot and stock areas they're just you know i guess it's more of like a chance a roll of the dice yeah the bear the bears have a lot more places to go there's you're not attracting them you're not creating these hubs where they all sort of congregate they're doing their natural thing but nice thing with your zone like typically guys are going to go south which is great like we've killed a lot of bears south but your zone isn't really talked about mm-hmm. and known. It's quiet for guys to go. Yeah, and right? it's tucked away and it's it's close. Um, mm-hmm. and it's got a ton of access, but people just don't they don't like to mess around there, especially in the spring. You know, it can be mucky a lot of that area. Um, but there's bears, like oh it's for a it's sure. a great, bears. great yeah. spot. Yeah. Well, that's where you got your two color phase bears. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I had the same permits last year and I couldn't didn't have any hunters, so took advantage and i wanted to harvest a couple bears or i wanted to harvest a bear yeah and uh ended up with a couple out of that zone yeah so yeah there's and high color face big bears and uh and so the bear that i killed was right on the other side of the highway from that zone yeah you're like but well, it was in a baiting zone so the highway's a divider we we're less than a kilometer and it from was the a highway. real nice yeah. color faced bear yeah. too yeah um yeah we killed well wow yeah we killed Three colored bears first right off the bat, right? Or no, Braden's was in between. Braden's is black. And Charlie's was in between. So I guess we did pretty good last yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. A good mix of everything. Yeah, no, it was it was quite the year last year. We did pretty good. Katie didn't get one. She hunted hard. She had a she had a monkey on her back. We yeah. never saw we never had a shooting opportunity. Oh really? And I think we sat six days. Full full evenings. Yeah. Like that's... full evenings. And I was telling her the and whole you time, like, that if we go and with sit. two big bears at that bait. Yeah, and w- w- we only had a bear come in once on the first day. Okay, so I was looking at the trail camera videos from that bait, because we've got wicked videos of the yeah. bears chasing each other off. I actually posted them on our 
Facebook page if anyone wants to check them out. Actually, we'll throw them up right now. If you're watching this podcast, I'm going to put that video up right now. So there's the the bigger boar comes in and the smaller one actually chases that bigger one off and they go back and forth at each other for a while. Um, but one of those bears I noticed had a white patch on it Yeah, that's that the I didn't one. notice before. That was one of the target bears. Did you notice last year at a white patch? Yes. Yeah, so there okay. was there was a big boy. I might have noticed it. And then, then there was a big white blaze. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, we it was we were sort of creeping up on the end of the season. I think we were like late third week of May when Katie was finally able to start hunting. Yeah. And I told her, I said, you know, if we go sit baits, if you pick three or four nights and we sit baits, and this is being a little bit cocky. I was like, we're gonna get a bear. Like you're gonna have a shot at opportunity. It's almost impossible not to. And I was kind of hyping her up, maybe a little bit more than I should have. Yeah. And so first night we started sitting. It was real cold, like freaking raining. And I think it was only like plus one or plus two. And uh, so she froze and it was miserable. And we sat there for, I don't know, seven, eight hours. And then right before dark, like 45 minutes, right, right on time, like right when you'd expect um, the big guy with the white chest come in and she's like shaking. And she already told me wow. like, f- like half an hour before she's like, if something comes in now, like I'm not going to be able to shoot it. Yeah. She's so cold. Right. I was like, well, we don't want to blow it. Let's at least get footage. Like if you're okay and you can sit and not shoot, that's fine. Let's just sit. Yeah, yeah. And we have ha- like 15 minutes, half an hour left and then we'll Did leave. Do you get footage of the bear? I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and yeah, yeah, we definitely got footage of the bear. Okay, well let's put that up here because yeah, yeah. I don't remember seeing it. But so no, I, I definitely have. have footage of the bear because the bear came in. And so what what I do is I hang up when I go, I hang a beaver. And then if I'm hanging a full beaver, if I have beavers, I'll cut them in half. If I hang a full beaver, I'll always gut it when it's in the tree. So okay. I'll take my machete and I'll just like cut. You're the talking bu- skin though. Yeah, yeah, it's a skin beaver. Yeah. So I string it up in the tree right before we sit. And I like to always bring a beaver the day we sit. Yeah. And uh, and so I string it up in the tree, and then I just hit it with the machete. And I always just slice the guts open. And yeah. it, it, you just smell beaver instantly, right? Oh, yeah, right? for sure. And so there was guts laying on the, on the ground, and the, the beaver's always hanging about eight, nine feet in the air, so they can just paw at it. They mm-hmm. can't hang from it. Yeah. And so we're sitting there. She's freezing. It's almost dark. The bear comes in, goes right, right to the gut pile of the beaver, and I think he saw us or heard her move or maybe he heard me turn the camera on or something. He looked at us, grabbed the guts, ran behind a big tree, and then we could just see his butt. Wow. And I got, I think there's about 15 minutes of footage of, or yeah, maybe 10 minutes of footage of him just sitting there. Yeah. Kind of behind a tree, kind of not, just eating those guts. And then he came back in and messed around for a little bit. And then he left and, you know, we just couldn't shoot. I think we hunted three or four more days. Never saw a bear. Um, had a coyote come in a couple times. There was a. a oh, mark- did you have the coyote come in while you guys were there? Yeah. So so did Tommy, and uh, it was it was a good. He didn't guy. come right into us. He skirted. Oh okay. Twice he came in two different nights. Yeah. The first night he went back and then went f- like went across and then went back and then the first night we just seen him and then there was a Martin. Oh yeah, yeah. Me and Tim big were there. Pine Martin a, there. Yeah. A big nice orange and blonde yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think we have footage of that too. And then the very last night, I had a real good feeling. It was a really nice night. It was warm. Um, no wind. It just felt like it was going to be the day. And we were sitting there, nothing, nothing, nothing. Get to about an hour before dark. And it's quiet. And the wind, like, perfectly dies down. I could hear, like, a chain or, like, a barrel. Oh, really? thinking like is that a barrel and she's like deaf compared to like she can't hear nothing or she doesn't know what to listen for one or the other yeah she's like i can't hear anything and i'm okay well hold your breath and so i'm like trying to listen i swear i could hear like claws against a metal barrel or like a chain against a barrel yeah like a bear might come in yet like it sounds like something's at another bait yeah and we saw those quad tracks kind of up the trail a little ways and we saw yeah, so there's two there was trails going in and we did see quad tracks going down the one trail into the bush but no signage no but signs. no signs yeah so and i don't like to poke around right so we never went in and checked it out but anyway we're yeah we're sitting there i, I assume there's already a bait there so we're thinking okay the bear's at the other bait 
let's hope it's the big boy. Let's hope he comes in. If it's not, if it's a decent bear, you're going to crack it anyway. Cause yeah. it's, it's like our last sip. And right before dark, just as it's getting like, can I shoot? Can I not? And you're looking at your phone, watching the clock. We hear this bear like coming in and he's coming in from the Creek. Like they usually come yeah. in from the bottom side. Right. Yeah. And we can hear sticks cracking and I can hear him like breathing and, and they popping his teeth. Wow. Jesus, and, man. And uh, I'm like, okay, like this might happen. And then he like huffed and stopped and we didn't see him. This was all like in the trees. I could maybe see his feet. Okay. Like I didn't get any footage or anything. And he huffed and stopped. And then I heard him like kind of run off in the moss. So you can't hear much. And then we waited another 10 minutes. Nothing. Okay. Well, it's too dark. Let's go. Let's go before he comes back. Yeah. Start climbing down the tree. Katie goes first. I said, you get down. I'll pass you everything. That way, if something comes in, I have a gun. I'm yeah. at least I can, you know, kill it from the tree or whatever. And it's, we're just jumping off through platform and she gets down. I get down. We get all our gear on our backs and we start walking out and we must have been like 10, 12 yards just on the other side of, you know, when you're leaving the bait, you mm -hmm. take the right to go on the trail, there's trail and there's that yeah. big down tree. Yeah. It's kind of on the left as you go around the corner. Yeah, because like there's another your old trail, trail. That goes left. Like yeah, your yeah. old trail, yeah, goes, yeah, yeah. there's a down tree across yeah. it now. So we're turning, and it it was so dark, you couldn't see, but you could just feel something Eyes. was like... Yeah, right there. Yeah, and you could like hear it smashing the brush and shit. She's like, we better go. I'm like, yeah, let's... And see, so that's, what, that's what freaks Amy out so much about the baits. Yeah. That's um, my most... My most nervous time is leaving. Leaving at for night. Sure. Because and it's not because they don't hunt you, they're not trying to get you or nothing. But if you, you run into one. If you scare them, turn the corner, bear there, you're there. Or they're you're coming startled. To, coming down the ladder and you know, and well, I usually make a lot of I try noise. to noise. I try yeah. to make I don't like to make human noise, but I try to oh, make really? lots of like See just, if I'm if I'm with someone I'll talk. Yeah, me too. Like have a conversation. It makes them. It makes everybody a lot more yeah. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. But if I'm alone, I don't like to make human noise. I just like to make like just presence, like making sure I break sticks. And I'm the same way. If, I, if my I'm gun alone, on and... actually, if I'm alone, I'll usually try and just sneak out of there. Yeah. I don't um, like being quiet. Not even if in you're the just dark. trying to motor the your way out. Yeah. yeah. Just get the fuck out of there. <laughs> if it's like my deer stand or something, absolutely. But in the bear stands. I'm just like, hey, I'm here. Let me leave. And you know what? I'm just thinking now, like, I haven't, I don't think I've sat at a bait by myself for consecutive days and since uh, 2018. Yeah, you always had somebody with you. I always had someone with me because 2020 was last year and, and I only sat with you and Tim. Yeah. 2019, I hunted with my brother and Tim. 2018 is when I killed my bear by myself. And so that was the last time I would, and, and, you know, think of thinking of it now, I had to hike all the way down that trail. So I think I was making a bit of noise. Um, one moment that stands out in particular is I killed my moose in 2019. And then I was sitting that same stand three days later for deer <laughs> And I had a gut pile, which was 50 yards away from the stand. And the fucking wolves, like one came down the trail. Oh, yeah. Almost came right under, right under my stand. Like I was ready to kill that thing. But it it skirted around the stand. Um, but then as I was getting down that night, and once that wolf got to the, the gut pile, wolves howling all around me. And like within a couple hundred yards, mm -hmm. you know, because they knew that gut pile was there. They probably hit it each night prior. Yep. And, uh, you know, just wolves howling everywhere. And I'm trying to skirt my way out of there. And uh, yeah, you know, um, it's good to make a little bit of noise because like you said, you don't want to... Um, you know, run into something on the trail and you spook it. Well, my, it my imagination, you. like when I'm climbing out of a stand or leaving a stand in the dark, I'm not picturing a black bear either. Like I'm like, if I'm going to run into something and it's going to be a bad day, it's going to be a grizzly bear. And that every, every bait, every tree stand, whether it's a deer stand or a bear stand, we've had grizzlies on mm -hmm. every single one. Yeah. And every Every time we baited that one stand last year, the bear was there like less than two hours after. Yeah. And me and Tommy went and baited that at like one in the morning that one night. And then we looked at the trail camera photos. He was there at like 3.30 or something. 
Yeah, it's crazy, man. Well, I when I went, me, you, and Katie went and hit three or four baits and filled them up. And that bait in particular, you left her at the bait site by herself to oh, load yeah, we the went barrels back up. To go get, we went, yeah, we she went was, back to the quad. Yeah. Well, it was only 180 or 50 yards away. Yeah. But it was like dark. She had a headlamp. <laughs> I'm like, do you want the gun? She's like, no, it's fine. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with Eric. And we'll... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little eerie. Um, we definitely have a lot of grizzly bears in, in this country, at least. I don't know what others are like, but, um, you gotta be vigilant, you gotta be vigilant. Um, so when you're bow hunting, do you carry, like, have you sat at the bait by yourself? Yeah. No. Oh, you have? Yeah. Like that bait of where you killed your bear. I built that for me. Like that was a solo stand, right? Oh, that one. Yes. Yeah. So are you to, holding a, are you carrying a gun? If I'm in a tree, bow? if I'm in the tree, I won't carry a gun. Not for in and out of the stand? No. No. If, um, I'll have one in the truck, like yeah. in case I got to put something down, but I like, I just, it's just too much crap. Yeah. Um, I will put like bear spray in my pocket, but, um, bear spray is smart and bear spray is something I've never had. And I've like hunting with you. There's a few things that I've learned that I should acquire. One of them is bear spray, which I I'm going to do in the next mm-hmm. couple of weeks. And the second one is a mosquito head net, yeah. which I just ordered off Amazon and arrived oh. the other day. And I wouldn't survive. <laughs> yeah. I was actually working on your, your bear episode with the two bears you killed and you put a mosquito net on at the end. And That's like, how I got mosquito net is the reason i killed my second bear yeah and, and i said you know what it's time i i'm being told right now i need a mosquito net so <laughs> yeah. i'm ordering one so i got one and then bear sprays the other one right because um yeah if, if you're walking out of the bait site and you do run into something you know i, th- I think bear spray is a good thing to have yeah and my, you, my especially if you don't have spray. a gun yeah and even if i have a gun like almost always just well, when I'm bow hunting, like there's just a pocket and that's what goes in it. Yeah. Bear spray. And it's because I just imagine if shit was to go down to try and reach for a gun, like you basically got to have your finger on a trigger. It's got to be loaded. And I never walk with a loaded rifle anyway, like one in the tube kind of thing. So if shit's going to go down, your best bet probably is bear spray. Now I'm not talking like like 20 yards standoff with a grizzly and cubs or like a sow and cubs and she's looking at you and you're looking at her and there's a whole moment. I think if when it happens, it's going to happen so fast that you're either ready or you're not. And it's way easier to say, be ready with a can of bear spray. Yeah. Than trying to swing a long rifle. You, you see, you see some skirt through the bush. So you just hold on to your bear spray while you're walking. Take it out of my pocket. And, and you so seen it on that video. Yeah. That's it was like, yeah. And I and was like holding it in front of the camera. And see, I've always actually did I send you that video? That's a cell phone video. Yeah, it's a cell phone video. Did you get it? No, you should send it to me because it would be cool to you yeah. might have sometime. Yeah. Not recently, I don't think you have. It's for that episode though. The cell phone video. Yeah. That you set up by your truck, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was walking back from my first bear yeah. to get my head net. Because the wind it was super windy that day, like crazy wind. Shot my bear. Did all the footage. The first bear. The first bear. Yeah. Did all the footage, did the little talk, and then I was going to start breaking it down. And the wind just, like, stopped. It was just, like, dead all of a sudden. And I said to the camera, I'm like, oh, this is nice now. The wind just quit. And then, like, 30 seconds later, I couldn't even see bugs in my eyes. And so I ran back to the truck, and I fell. <clears throat> and when I got back up, and just like I got back up and just continued to jog, and I took like three or four more steps, and I looked up, and there's this blonde bear, like just staring at me, like hey, bear. 15 yards. So then I pulled out my phone Go and on. my bear spray, and I filmed it to my truck. And I kind of like rotated around the bear, and my bow was in my truck already. Go on. And then I went after it. Yeah, that's something else. But I and will so, send you that video. Yeah, send yeah. it to me. And so when we were moose hunting and elk hunting, you still had that bear spray with you. Yep. And I've always just, you know, crossed my fingers and hoped that I didn't run into stay. something. Because, you, can stay there. you know, with just a bow, there's not, you know. Just, you don't walk with an arrow knocked air. anyway, right? I do. Do you? That's like all, all I got. day? <laughs> no, well, I don't know if I do all day. I used to. Like I don't I started, do. I honestly but... don't do a whole lot of walking with just the bow. 
Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna carry bear spray going forward. My though. thoughts are, and and there's this arguments have been had a million times over, but like in Canada, we can't carry a sidearm. So that cross that off the list. If we could carry a sidearm, carry a fucking sidearm. If you can oh, legally carry 100%. a sidearm, carry a sidearm, put the bear spray in your pack. Time, yeah. Don't even don't question. Just buy something with a fairly large caliber, short snub nose, something that you can carry around. Doesn't need to be a, like a big, dirty, hairy gun. Just get something that's practical. Yeah. That can put down a bear. And that's it. Don't worry about it. And mm-hmm. all these packs, like Badlands, they make great packs. Every pack has a, uh, has my, a sidearm yeah, slot. Yeah, my Sacrifice LS. Every back, day pack back, from Badlands. Has Everyone a, does? Yeah. Okay. Has a sidearm slip. Or yeah. or at least you can get an attachable one if it doesn't yes. have it. Um, most, most mountain packs have a sidearm pouch. Um, if you can carry a sidearm, that's definitely the way to go. But in Canada, unfortunately, um, to swing a 30 inch gun at a bear that's just trying to knock you over, run you over like a freight train, it's just not going to happen, right? You're going to be real lucky if you have time to load a gun and point it at a, a charging bear. Yeah. So the last two years, 2019, 2020 i've carried a single shot shotgun and that's a cool little shotgun that one you got yeah like when i was hunting um with my brother with john with tim i always had that shotgun um this last season with you i didn't you had a gun but with tim i had it yeah and um and yeah, you know, that, that's an easy one. It's small enough. But again, but you only got one shot. That's as small as you can go. That's too. as small as you can legally go. Yeah. Like I can fold this thing and it'll fit in the side pocket of my backpack. But how are you going to get to it? How are you going to get to it? So I that's carry like, it going in and out of the stand. Yeah. Um, and that's really the only time you got to worry about anything exactly. happening. Yeah. Um, I sat John's bait in 2019. And that was the first time I had a real scare of a bear coming up my tree. Um, but you know, I just sort of false charged him. So he was a little startled and then he backed away and, and, uh, the bear actually sat in front of me for like four hours that night. But, um, but yeah, you know, I think the only time thing you really got to worry about is when you leave and go into yeah. that stand. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you know, bear spray is kind of a, a last resort too. Like even if you get hit by a bear, you know, you can still pull it out of your pocket and it's point blank quick yeah it's gonna at least and it it works like it's so high powered i've been sprayed by this shit it sucks but it just like shuts their eyes shuts their nose off they can't taste yeah if a bear can't smell he's he's screwed right and it's just uh yeah it's better than it's it's the best option we got so um do you buy a new can every year is there a certain brand you prefer um i think the most uh, there is a brand here. I think you can only really get one or two brands here in Canada. Okay. But yeah, no, I buy a. I don't let it freeze if I if like I like to leave one in my truck, but um, I don't recommend it because I know a lot of guys that have had them explode in their vehicle. So I I did the last can of bear spray I bought was in like 2015, and at that time I hauled it around with me everywhere. Yeah. And so I left it in my quad box. Yeah, that'll happen. And it exploded. Yep. And so I opened up my quad box to go take something out. And man, it was like my eyes were sore from just opening it. And then everything that we touched, that my fingers touched, mm-hmm. just burnt. And then you touch your eyes and your eyes are burning. Yeah, and... I know a guy that <laughs> yeah. he was uh, he was out. Actually, he was going goat hunting with his daughters. He's from BC. And uh, his daughters are 12 and 14 or something. And he had a can in the pocket of his the back pocket of his seat like his front seat you know so you can like access the pocket from the back seat yeah and his daughter was like digging around or something and it went off and then she didn't really like notice anything or something she ran her hand through her hair and then that was like game over and they were like three hours from anywhere so he's sitting there like just pouring stream water over her as she cries because that's all you can do holy just let it wear off right it's just pepper like hardcore spice right but uh yeah yeah it's, 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 it's smelled it's like spices stuff. well it's like it's not like uh it's like uh like a pepper spice yeah well that's what it is there's i can't remember what the what the chemical is it's from peppers though yeah it's in it yeah 
Interesting. It's good stuff. Yeah. So uh, moral of the story, I'll be carrying bear spray this year. But if you're going to carry it, <laughs> put it somewhere you can get it. That's you the same with the sidearm. It goes, yeah. with, goes with anything. Like even when we were, we were in the mountains and um, one buddy there, Marty, he brought a mare's leg. Okay. Which is like a, I don't even know what caliber it is. Bigger, yeah. not quite a forty-five seventy, but, and nice and short, like just small, folds down to nothing. Um, perfect defense gun, lever yeah. action, big loop on it. But <clears throat> when you're hiking, it's in the side of your pack. It's packed away. And we talked about it because we got to a spot where we saw like where two or three different bears had crossed this creek. It oh, just okay. was like a game wow. trail. Yeah. And we're like, oh, we might actually see a bear. Yeah. And uh, so we had a little game plan. The three of us were like, hey, well, what happens if we come over the boulder and there's a freaking grizzly there? Yeah. It's like, well, I'll just stand still so that one of you guys can grab the pack and then somebody else film in case we all die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you got to be, uh, you got to have a game plan. Well, and yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. Do, yourself a, do yourself a favor and just have, have some sort of plan or idea of what yeah. you're doing. And, and yeah, if you have bear spray or a sidearm, or a shotgun or something. If you're packing the weight, might as well have it somewhere it's useful. Yeah. It's like a lot of guys that get mauled by bears, they got bear spray, but it's in their pack or something yeah. too, right? It's just it's no good. Yeah, and there's a lot of a lot of bears. Yeah. A lot of grizzlies. Don't go out there. Let's and get hydrate mauled. though. I brought some Overlander Pale Ale. So two podcasts ago, we had uh we said we were going to every odd podcast bring a, a craft beer, which we know nothing about. <laughs> we're total noobs in craft beer, but something different. And, uh, you know, crack one, see what it tastes like, and uh, let you guys know what we think of it. So it's a total amateur review of uh, a different craft beer every, uh, every odd podcast. Yeah, I don't know why anybody would want my opinion, but... <laughs> that last one was dead on, though. Like, what we had described, and then we read the can. Yeah. It and was we, basically yeah. what and it was. we were too stupid to read the can first, yeah. <laughs> so... This one is out of Jasper, right? Um, right Folding, around there. Folding Mountain Brewing. So they're right on the park gates just before... Just after you come into Jasper. Jasper East, Alberta, yeah. Highway 16. Yeah. They just... I think they're just outside of the park gates. They are just outside yeah. of the park gates. Very nice brewery, super good, super beautiful restaurant, very good food. So I was there this past summer, and when we went there, they were releasing a new raspberry beer. Mm -hmm. And so it was like the day before they had released it, and so we were camping not far from there. We went there, and they had sold out within like hours, and they're like, this is all we have. <laughs> So this has been, I've had a few of these in my fridge for a little while, but I thought, hey, this is a good one to bring, you know, an Alberta brewed beer, yep. sort of like the last one. Um, that last one was actually brewed here in Slave Lake. Right down the road. Down the road. Yep. Yeah, that's incredible. So this is the Overlander Pale Ale Folding, Mount, Folding Mountain Brewing. Is it the journey or is it the destination? It's the journey. It's is it the journey? journey. You know, one thing I've said is... Venture um, forth. What does it say? Venture forth. Venture forth. At Folding Mountain Brewing, we believe it is both. The beer you are holding has taken a journey, one that starts with quality ingredients, including fresh Rocky Mountain water, and ends with a brew that is destined to taste great. Venture forth. What do you think, first sip? Cheers. I don't know. I had foam. Tastes like a, a pale beer if I knew one. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's not too bad, eh? I'm not a fan of the flavored stuff. Do you like the flavored stuff? I don't like mind that last it. stuff was flavored. Yeah, very well. That that uh, I think it was a dark a cop one was like a dark coffee chocolate. Coffee. That one I wasn't that's the a only fan one of. that I had. That was pretty dark. Um, and the other one was like a citrusy flavored kind of similar to like a. The shock top. Okay. That's what the other one was like. And this one, you though. You preferred the citrus one? Over the darker beer, but I don't... I'm not a fan of the fruity. Like, if it's mild or if it's like a like a hint of... A of, hint? You don't mind it. a hint? I don't mind a hint, but I don't like... 
it's like more like a cooler almost if yeah. it's too f- fruity, right? This, well, this one, is a beer. This tastes like a beer. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get to. This is a. F- I like a good beer, and this one tastes like beer. This is a beer. Yeah. Pale Ale, Alberta Brewed, Jasper, Alberta. Right on. There you go. I'll take it. So, should we get into the Grizzly Bears? Yeah, so Alberta just did a little bit of research on grizzly bears. A lot. According to them, a lot. The most the most that's ever been done. So Not I haven't sound like I Trump. I didn't look into it. I heard on the radio they mentioned that a section of Alberta had something like 60 grizzly bears. Was that what it was? You've looked into this. So before I ask, did they mention how they counted the grizzly bears or how they came up with the number? They did. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, what? What I'm gonna give, try and give a brief, um, minimally butchered summary of this. Um, our environment minister, is that what he is? Jason Nixon. Nixon yeah. He um, he's a, a big proponent of hunting. He's done a lot for um, the sheep stuff in this province um, in the last few years, and now he's bear, he's done some bear baiting stuff for yeah, us. Yeah, he's done some really good bear he's stuff. Allowed us to the, use quads. That's right. Yeah. During the fire season, the fire ban. Yeah. So if you hold a valid bear license, you can use your quad during a fire ban. Yep. Um, now, they did that last year. Whether they do that this year, I'm not too sure. I'm told they more than likely will, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, he's opened up the Sandhill Crane season in mm-hmm. a few zones as well. Yep. Um, he's definitely pro-hunting, Well, there's which we need. It just seems like there's finally some management. Like I'm not I'm not knocking Nixon at all, but for the last I don't know ten years, it seems like there's just been it's been dead in the water. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Nothing's updated. No. Nothing's and blanket laws that don't make sense. Across and that's the province. one thing they say: once you put a law in, it takes a lot to get that law out. Yeah. It's way easier to put it in and say and forget about it. It was easier to cancel the grizzly bear season than it'll ever be to bring it back. Yep. Yeah. And well, look at it. We're 13 years later, and we're still begging. And I've got grizzly bears, like I said a few minutes ago here, on every single trail camera, whether it's a deer stand, a moose spot, um, I live, or bear baits. I live five kilometers out of town, and I have a grizzly bear seven kilometers south of my house. Oh, yeah. That I had a video of. And a big bastard, that too. A not a little bear. one. <laughs> that was in November, wasn't it? There was a lot yeah. of snow on the ground. Beginning and... of November. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see what we see this year. It'll be interesting. So Nixon, he, um, him and a bunch of other people, a team of whoever takes care of this stuff, they did, um, a count and it's allegedly it's the, the only science, true science based grizzly count that's been done in this country. Um, maybe in North America in the last, like in modern times. Is that what they claim? Yes. Wow. Wow. So I have it here somewhere. So bears are very, very hard to to count and to, to get a, a population uh, number for. And the reason is, usually when you do your counting, you do it from the sky, they're aerial counts, and you count them in the wintertime because there's no vegetation. So if there's an elk running, a herd of elk, or if there's moose, and you're in the air, they stand out like a sore thumb because you've got snow, no leaves, no cover, but bears... They're denning up in the winter time. Yeah, they're... so you can't count them in the winter time. By the time, yeah, by the time you can truly see them, they're 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 gone. Once the leaves fall, there's a portion of those bears, a percentage of those bears that are going to be gone. Yeah. So they are very very hard to uh, to count. Yeah. And and grizzlies are a little bit later, but uh, they're just an animal that loves thick cover. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, we just don't have the open country. So I I have I have a bit of a bone to pick with some of the uh some of the stuff they wrote in this this article so the article i'm referring to is just right off the alberta.ca website and it's just regarding it's a day old i don't okay so this was published by the alberta government it's not like a global news or no so yeah there was a few news stories but i went to the alberta i i took screenshots of the article so it's not uh, i don't have the title in front of me but it's it's the it's the information regarding the, the, the grizzly bear count. So a few things I wanted to mention here. So for 
Oh yeah, first thing off the bat, Alberta is and Alberta and Bear Smart plan to roll out an app that will allow Albertans to take part in grizzly bear research and monitoring. Okay, so you report your grizzly bear sightings. If that's the idea, I'm all for that. That's probably not a bad that's plan. That's probably one of the best ways, I think, to figure out how many yeah. bears are around. And have some kind of incentive for people to participate. It doesn't have to be cash. Doesn't have, just make it worthwhile. Make it seem like it's actually doing something. And people will participate. Most hunters are going to want to report it. Exactly. Because we know how much of a problem mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. And how many there are. So, yeah, that was the first thing I thought was interesting. And I think that's great. I think that's really the only way they're going to be able to have any sort of number um, that adding to their counts. But just the math just doesn't make sense to me. So <clears throat> this is from their quick, quick facts list at the bottom of the article. It says grizzly bears have been listed as a threatened, as threatened in Alberta since 2010. At that time, the provincial population estimate was between 700 and 800 bears. The provincial estimate is now between 865 and 973 bears. So, just by that statement, in 11 years, we only gained about 150 bears on average. So they say. Really? You didn't read that wrong? Is that is that, that what it is? At that so time, we've gained about 10% more bears. In 2010, the provincial population estimate was between 700 and 800 bears, period. Kay. The provincial estimate is now between 865 and 973. Okay, well, that's a crock so of shit. So if we go to the high end of 2010's estimate at 800 bears, and we go to the high end of the estimate from this year, we only gained 173 bears. Now, if we go high end and low end, we only gained 65 bears. Now, FRI, Research's Grizzly Bear Program, is funded by partnered organizations, including the Government of, of Alberta and Alberta Forest Products Association. For the population studies, field crews went into 173 sites to collect grizzly hair samples. DNA from the hairs are then examined to identify different bears. So 175 sites, or 173 sites across the province. And the bear, hair traps, as far as I know, are like a barbed wire rub post. Yeah. And they just scratch on it, and there's some sort of scent or something that makes that attracts the bear to it. I've actually seen um, one or two of them. I've never went into the site, but they always leave a big government of Alberta sign saying, this is a bear monitoring area. Please leave it alone. So, yeah, so um, I have also here some... Yeah, so... In Alberta, the last I seen for black bears, they had estimated around 60,000, 70,000 black bears. Um, at one point in 2019, we had seen more grizzly bear the first two weeks of bear season than we had black bears. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't make sense how that population wouldn't have at least doubled in that amount of time. Well, how much? Yeah. Because you got to think when a sow grizzly bear is three, four years old, She's going to be looking to mate, and she's going to reproduce. So you're going to have three or four generations since 2010. And they're... And no hunting. no They have no predators. Nothing is killing them other than other bears, other grizzly bears. So an increase in the population of 10% or even 15%, the higher end, um, something doesn't seem right there. And, yeah, there's so there's nothing that kills them. Um, this I'm trying to pull up the actual article. Okay, so the article is called pos Positive P A W S I T I V E Positive News About Grizzly Bear Populations on the Alberta Alberta website, March 31st, 2020. So yeah, I just I don't understand. Um, a lot of this article is also seems to be geared towards minimizing human impact, human mortality on grizzly bears. Um, but you just, I just have a hard time. I'd like to see how many bears are killed by humans besides on the highway right now, like right now, like killed in self-defense. Well, what, yeah, what, what other ways? Mean? Well, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. Like yeah. they, they're talking about, um, cutting down on human caused mortality rate. Well, cause that's, yeah, the, the 
like I said, grizzly bears have no predators. So the only way they're getting killed is other bears um, or if they run into a human. Um, right? So there's, yeah. and I can't imagine there's that many. You know. That run ins, you mean? With, yeah. Like, that are fatal. Yeah. You, we just, you would hear about them. You'd hear about them. Right? Especially up here, we're in like the Mecca. Yeah. So uh, this is the part I wanted to get to, and I obviously didn't take a picture of it. Interesting. For the first time, Alberta has science based population estimates for all provincial bear management units. No other jurisdiction in the world has undertaken or achieved grizzly bear population inventory work at this scale. So they say nobody else in the world has done this type of grizzly bear research. The study also validates validates what Albertans have been telling us for years. Grizzly bear populations are on the rise across the province. Yes, we've been saying that for about 12 or 14 years. Two recent grizzly bear population surveys by FRI Research with support from Alberta Environment and Parks and the Alberta Forest Products Association has found that grizzly population has doubled in the foothills area east of Banff National Park. So east of, in the foothills, east of Banff, I don't know, I'm not saying this for certain, but I would imagine most of that is open country, fairly easy to count, definitely high populations of grizzly just because you're on the base of the mountains. Um, so I, and, and that sounds right. Like the population has doubled in the foothills area east of Banff. And that doesn't surprise me. No. And the reason why they, they probably got those numbers is like you said, they're, you know, it's, you're in the plains. It's easy to count those bears there. Exactly. We're up here. It would be quite tough. So the, (laughs) on that point, the very next sentence, a large area of boreal forest between white court and lesser slave Lake. Oh, wow. There we go. So (laughs) a large area between White Court and Lesser Slave Lake. So if anybody doesn't know the province or a little bit of history on this part of the province, this is like the grizzly bear capital of of mainland Canada. The largest grizzly bear killed ever, ever Uh, recorded. Yeah. Um, was actually killed the same spot where I killed my white-tailed deer in 2019, right outside of Slave Lake. 22 or so kilometers Florida north, Lake. south of this town. Yeah. And the Swan Hills Grizzly, world-famous, notorious, huge bears. Grizzly Ridge Mountain Range. Grizzly Ridge Mountain Range. Yeah. that's We were hunting bears there last spring. That's right. So that's all this area they're talking about, this large... Boreal forest between White Court and Lesser Slave Lake, the Swan Hills. Yeah. That all that is just huge. It's always been populated with grizzlies. There's never been a shortage of grizzlies in this area. Yeah. So I actually spoke with someone who claimed they did part of this aerial survey and, and so some of the surveying for grizzly bears um, before they canceled the season. And they had said this region was the only region in Alberta that still had healthy grizzly bear populations. Yeah, I believe it. And just in the last four or five years, areas we've hunted for several years, like I've hunted certain areas, specific area I've hunted my whole life. My dad um, trapped with my grandfather in that same area when he was a kid. They never saw grizzlies. You guys saw four there two years ago. Yeah, we did. And that's, three kilometers from that cabin yeah that my grandpa trapped in for 20 some years yeah and so they've just they've really started to come back and they're they're now so close to town that we're seeing them everywhere yeah we had um there were locals like people who live just outside of town that have grizzly bears in their in their backyard our friend john didn't he have a oh a, yeah? Didn't he have a whole freezer full of meat stolen? Yeah, from he had a, a young grizzly bear that actually he had a, a meat shed and he had beavers in there for bear season. It was in the spring, and this bear tore down the door of the meat shed, broke into his deep freeze, broke into his deep freeze, and yeah, stole stole our just bait. Made a, made we were gonna a we were gonna get those beavers from John. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I think he had like three or something in there, and the bear drug him off and ate a few, and yeah, it was just a mess. So yeah, there's grizzly bears all over the place. So um, how- so sorry this zone here this area between white court and slave lake did they mention that the population was was healthy or what did they say about it sorry i missed that so yeah i never got to the number okay because i don't that's why i don't believe the number okay this this is the part 
So I'm going to say, like, that's a lot of country. How, how many clicks are we from White Court? We're th- two-hour drive? Two and a half hours. So you're looking at... Probably 200 clicks as a crow flies? Yeah, it's a big... It's 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 big and it's and it's wide and it's all it's all wilderness. Yeah. There's no towns. There's a highway that goes w- east around it and there's a highway that goes west around it and in the middle there's nothing. It's wild. There's a little bit of oil field. It's wild. The rest is nothing. Yeah, the first 30 clicks off the highway is is oil field, but you go past there and if you can get some high up in some of those peaks, it's just it's, yeah, it's it's crazy. wild country. No one goes back there. Um, so I'm gonna say between here and White Court, if they actually came up with a number, now I know it's gonna be low because they just told us there's only approximately 900 or some in Alberta. But I would think so without that number, without that number, just, I would think, you know, if they're still on the rebound, I'm gonna say four thousand bears just from here to White Court. Yeah. Yep. You know, would, like I'd say, say black bears probably around eight thousand, double that, ten thousand. Yeah. Because they quoted sixty thousand in Alberta, and that area That's, does hold a lot of bears. And I think that would probably hold ten percent of them, maybe, or more, fifteen percent. So as per grizzlies, I'm gonna say Well, on a significant part of the <sighs> province doesn't hold any bears, right? In the south. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna say between three and five thousand, I would maybe Grizzly think. Bears. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say I would put my money right around five thousand somewhere. Yeah. So the number they gave held out long enough here. Between White Court and Lesser Slave Lake, they found about sixty two grizzly bears. <laughs> this is the first <laughs> The first scientific population <laughs> estimate for this area. Wow, does it ever sound scientific, eh? The first scientific population estimate for this area. So where did these numbers come before, and what are they comparing them to? These are They pulled these numbers out of their ass. Man, I'm speechless. That doesn't even make sense, right? So... I would say there's that many bears, maybe south of town, within... Like you from know, from like Canyon Creek to Ottawa River, I bet you there's a oh, hundred grizzly say bears. Even, yeah, I'd say that area more. there because that's a lot of country too. They love those hills. I'd say there's probably more than sixty bears back there. Probably a couple hundred. Yeah. 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 Wow. I just I, and so the following paragraph, and then I'm done with this. <clears throat> With these up-to-date numbers, Alberta Environment and Parks can estimate the total number of grizzly bears in Alberta between 856 and 973. This gives us the clearest picture yet on the status of Alberta's grizzly bears with help, or the, the clear status of Alberta grizzly bears and will help us set the policy and management direction for the future. Man, that is so frustrating. Yeah. So I think the best thing they can do um, is get that app, right? Because obviously the way they're counting these bears, um, I would put money on it. Like I would put everything I own on betting that there is at least at least quadruple that number. Yeah, they're they're like playing <laughs> with a minuscule percentage. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think what it is is you're getting people who. You know, they go to university, they're biologists, and and all of their experience is out of a textbook. Book. Yeah. Right? So, you know, 2010, they they canceled it, or they put it on the with endangered, or... Yeah, protected, protected. endangered. 2010. So, you know, let's say you had someone who started going to school in 2008. They got done in 2013. Well, that whole period, that bear was under the protected endangered whatever it was and so every textbook that they're reading is basically saying there's no grizzly bears and then they get out and you know they're they're doing some local work and working in offices and and this and that but they aren't covering the miles in the bush like us hunters are Mm -hmm. you know you and i we've like hunting elk this year we you know on a day it's nothing to cover you know, 15 clicks on your feet. Yep. You know, you're in the mountains covering 30 clicks, 40 clicks, 
you know, on your feet. So you're covering a lot of ground where I think these guys, they just don't cover that ground and they don't, they aren't out there enough. Well, it's a different, yeah, it's like a different perspective. It's a whole different world. They're in a, they're in a different reality. They are right. Where, where it's sort of an eco chamber, right? Mm -hmm. And us hunters are in our own eco chamber. So we're sort of on the same page with biologists. If they don't hunt, they aren't really in it with us and they don't really see it the same way we do. We notice that with the younger generation of fish and wildlife a little bit, right? Like, I don't know, maybe not to put anybody on the spot or anything, but it just seems like the, the younger guys I've ran into, it's sort of like by the book and like this, this, I need to check this, this, and this, and this. And then like a few times I've been stopped by an older guy, maybe a more experienced officer. It's like, Hey, how's it going? How's the hunting? Yeah. Is it any good? And he's still doing his job. Yeah. But he's just, he's actually interested in, in just what, what's so, actually yeah, going on. That's like, actually a good example too, right? Instead yeah. That's actually a good a... example, right? Because you, we don't know what bite, it could be experienced biologists that have been doing this for 40 years, or it could be a new guy that's doing this. But, you know, I think if, if anyone spends enough time outdoors and enough time in bear country, and if you have enough trail cameras out, mm-hmm. you're going to notice that, you know, grizzly bears are very prevalent all over the place like they don't have to look hard all around here yeah um i had a customer in from fort mcmurray he's seen grizzly bears on the highway to fort mcmurray um you know he, up there they've seen them and they've they said they've never had grizzly bears before but they're starting to see them because what's happening with bears and i talked to a guy um yesterday about this where he said you know i had these blonde bears on my property and this year i haven't seen them well what happens with bears they're very, very territorial. Mm-hmm. So one year you might have a boar, a sow, a few young ones, and the next year those blonde young ones, they're gone. And the reason is those boars are territorial. They're going to chase them out of their area. And so if you have 50 grizzly bears in these hills over here, right, they're going to populate. They're going to have babies, this and that, and they're territorial. They aren't going to stay there. They're going to disperse and go farther and farther and farther. And that's why we're seeing grizzly bears now. And in places they're way we more of a solitary animal. Yes. Where black bears will hang out. They will kind of mill around together. Yes. They do fight and they do do their rutting thing and they do have um, just general play. But a grizzly bear is, you know, he like, he just doesn't want to be in the range of another grizzly bear. He wants his own spot. That's true. Yeah. And He's a thousand pound bear. He needs to eat a lot of every meat. Every grizzly bear I've gotten on camera has been by itself. Now we did see two grizzly bears together, um, Amy and the kids and I, where we bear hunt. Um, but I think that one, I think it was a younger one and a sow or two younger ones. But that's totally common and there are chances that's are they related. Yes. Right? I think it was two like two like they were big bears, mm-hmm. but I think they were probably two year olds or year yeah. and a half olds. Um, well, this was spring, so they would have been probably a year and a half mm-hmm. and they were together. Um, but yeah, they're very, you know, they like to be alone, right? So, And they like to travel. They like a black to travel. Bear, because a black bear is a scavenger more so than a hunter, and he's a herbivore more so than a carnivore, they like they get comfy. Yep. And so the thing with these biologists, they got to look at the raw data from the, the scientific experiments and scientific um, th- stuff they're doing, not what everyone else is telling us. They can't listen to that because they got to look at the results from from their projects, the right? The math. the math they do. So they're setting out a hundred was one hundred seventy traps or something, and you know they got this many this many bears is their total. Well, that's what they're going to publish because they don't have any proof that there was any more. Yeah. That's all they got. Um. So yeah, it's super unfortunate that. Well, and we know, don't have a solution. The number just doesn't seem. But we don't have a solution. Like I'm not. I don't. I don't know. There isn't a way to count bears. Well, that's like I said. I don't earlier, want. It's... I don't want you to go and trank them all. I don't no. want you to go put a chip in all of them. I so definitely I think, don't want collars on them all. Yeah, I think the best way to do it is the app. So maybe, you know, Nixon really thinking and being pro hunting, listening maybe to this podcast. This, <laughs> maybe this was a way for him to get the app in. Yeah. Hey guys, you know, we should do a bear grizzly app. No, we don't have funding for that. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this, uh, this, whatever they call it. Let's get the biologists here. Let's see how many grizzly bears are. Okay, there's only 15% more, but guys are telling me there's a lot more. Well, let's get the app. And I think the app is going to give us the best and most honest and truest. Well, it gives you the most boots on the ground. 
right? number. Yeah. Like if you can go on your phone and right beside your your iHunter app or your map app, you can click the bear thing and just go, I saw a bear here. Yeah. And it just shows a hotspot on the Alberta map. Yeah. Good enough. Right? No, what I think do you need great. more? It's just like the hunter harvest reports. I'm all for that. Yeah. Just don't don't let the contact tracing people design this app because that one didn't work <laughs> yeah apparently i don't freaking know like what i heard it's 1.5 really percent of albertans using it or something jesus christ but um yeah so we'll see you know hopefully this is this is a start hopefully it's a foot in the door a foot in the door right because our foot hasn't been in the door for the last decade yeah she's and been she's been locked shut locked tight and it's going to take a lot to open it up it's going to take a lot and it's going to take several years. And so if they see high numbers on this app one year, they best see high numbers for three, four years in a row before mm-hmm. anything really happens, I'd imagine. Um, but they'll see it because I am confident that, uh, you know, there is well, they're qu- not- at, at least like at the very least quadruple that many bears. And they're not going anywhere. No. They can't go. They anywhere. have no predators. Nothing's killing them. No. <clears throat> and people aren't killing them. No, so um, hopefully we don't yeah. run into any. Well, I think I always like seeing them, but from a distance. Yeah, so each time I've seen them, well, actually, so the first one we seen, I was hunting with Amy and the kids, and so we're hunting in this area where you know there's just trails and stuff all over the place. We're in the truck just bombing down looking for bears, and we see this blonde ass go over a, a ridge. <clears throat> the kids are with us. Amy's with us. And, and you know, no one's around. So we're like, Hey guys, boys, we're locking the truck. Stay here. We'll be right back. <laughs> we're just going to go over that hill. Probably not the best thing to do, <laughs> but you know, it's all good. So anyways, they know how to get a hold of us. They can run out and get us or whatever. But anyways, we, we, so we reach the hill and this bear turns around. And I see the hump. I'm like, Amy, that's a grizzly. And so she bolts it back to the truck. I get back and I get up in the truck with the camera. And uh, yeah, a, a big grizzly. Didn't so, somebody not have boots on or something during that? So I told Amy to take her boots off because they were being too loud when we we're stalking this bear. <laughs> I remember right? that. And so we just had to get to that hill. Like I said, let's let it get over the hill. I just didn't blonde ass. And once it's over the hill, we're going to beeline to that hill. It won't see us, and then we'll be able to get a shot off. So he beelined to that hill, and as soon as I see him, I'm like, grizzly, that's a grizzly. Yeah. And then so she throws her boots in the air because mm-hmm. I told her to take it off, and she runs, and I pick up her boots because I didn't want to leave them behind. <laughs> get back to the truck, and Jackson's like, what's going on? <laughs> They're like, it's all good. There's a grizzly bear. We're back here. And uh, and then it was just like a couple days later that uh, we seen two more grizzlies, mm-hmm. and then we seen one more after that. Um and they're beautiful, beautiful yeah. animals. So, you know, every time other than that, we've been in the vehicle um, where we've seen them on trail camera. And, uh, yeah, just magnificent animals. And they are huge. They are big, big yeah, animals. They're big, yeah. Right? So, um, yeah, you know, it, well, we if should, we should they throw do... Up, we should throw up uh, the comparison photos of the black bear and grizzly bears from the bait where tommy killed his bear for sure yeah so, so we we'll have a black bear right standing now. in the same position as the grizzly bear and he's about as big as his leg yeah <laughs> and that grizzly bear is huge beautiful yeah. color on it too very nice um actually and, that that bait that you and uh katie sat so last year we I, we had some grizzlies that came in later on in the season but the year before, I've got video of a big black bear coming in and then a big grizzly like that evening. And it just looks like it looks like it's different animal. Different totally like different like, and totally different type Climb of animal. up on a 40, 55 gallon drum and just squash, squash it like a it. tin can. Yeah. So I pulled my baits last year at the last day of the season. And uh usually I can reuse my barrels, but literally squashed it. And so, like, like usually they'll pop right Sunday. back up, but it just didn't, right? It was squashed. That's so, 10,000 pounds, man. Yeah. Of fury. Yeah. Anger. It, so when they do, if they ever do, there's going to be some big bears killed. Oh. Like, put maybe another record, right? Man, that that <laughs> bear we got on camera uh, at where Tommy killed yeah, his. Yeah, it's big. 
and the scars on his head and the like his old looking yeah. face and I just it just looks like something out of a horror movie. It's amazing how these animals, like how that bear in particular, he's probably been around for, you know, a dozen years. On the, I was going to say on the lower end, maybe seven, eight. On the high end, could be 15, 20 years. Yeah. And it's just crazy to think how an animal like can just and survive for so long. Nobody's ever pursued him. No one's ever in the last and decade. He's no as big as a him. minivan. And so that's the issue we're running into now, right? Is these animals have no predators. No one's ever hunted them. You know, when you see a black bear and that bear sees you, he knows you're there. Um, he they usually know that that they have a they per, should get the hell out of yeah, there. They have like a sense that like yeah, we we might be prey. Now, if you're at a bait and you're feeding 10 bears and killing one a year, it's a little bit different because then they see you as well, I like the to person give, feeding uh, yeah, them. Yeah, I like to give off the vibe that, like, uh, hi, I'm feeding you. Yes. Yeah. And because realistically you are, you're going to mm-hmm. feed every bear there unless there's a big one and you're going to kill it, right? Um, so but the thing with grizzly bears is they've had no one hunting them. Mm-hmm. So everyone that we've seen, they don't run away when they see you. They're curious. They actually come a little closer to you to see what's going on. And 95% of the people that do see them, or maybe 99% of them are so scared to even like shoot one in self-defense because there's been so much shit over these protected grizzlies, right? Well, and that's like that- one, one thing guys have asked me coming up guiding from the States, like, do you guys have grizzly bears? Yeah. Yeah. We see them once in a while. Well, could we shoot them if we see them? Like, no, definitely not. You better have, you better basically be bleeding if you kill a grizzly bear. Yeah. Because otherwise you're getting thrown in jail. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's something that they're seeing more and more of now. New hunters shooting a grizzly bear thinking it's a blonde bear and they get up to it and their buddy's like, oh man, I'm pretty sure that's a grizzly. And then they leave it there. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, Fish and Wildlife has a photo of it on Facebook and they, they usually always track the person down. So if you don't really know the difference, guys, you know, Check it out on fate or on, on Google. Difference between well, black bear grizzly. There's it's, a very good description in the regulations. Regulations are great. You know yeah. that big hump on their back is is a prime giveaway. Yeah. Um, you know they're just bigger, beefier animals. And if they're if they look too pretty to be a black bear, they're probably a grizzly bear. Yeah. Like a grizzly has like three or four different colors of fur. Lots of times. Oh yeah, right? they'll have tips and. Like they'll have frosted tips and they'll have blonde running down their back and dark going down their legs. Yeah. And, and most black bears are fairly uniform. So where where I had <laughs> released an arrow at that moose that we called in mm-hmm. last uh, fall, the fall before that, I had a real nice, dark, dark, chocolatey black grizzly bear. And so I had a deer trail. And he came into that deer trail and he rolled around on his back mm-hmm. and just rolled around and rolled, rolled around on his belly and got his scent all over there, all over there. And I had nothing come through in like several weeks after that, <laughs> but just a beautiful color grizzly. Yeah. I was going to sit that stand. Now that I think of it, I think that was like opening day or something. And so I was going to sit that stand the next day and I got the photo sent to me on my phone. I'm like, okay, no, I guess I'm not going there. And I'm glad I didn't because, like I said, nothing, nothing came through after that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're all over the place. So it will be interesting. Um, so is the app available yet? I, I didn't see it. No, I think they're talking about Talking about it. something together, yeah. Okay, and w- do they say no, what it's going to be called yet? No, no advertising of it at all. It's okay. just mentioned in like the intro of the article. Yeah, so we'll have to keep checking back on that. And if we do see it come available, we'll I'll, definitely, I'll definitely be shout put, it out yeah. to everybody. If it's going to be useful, if it's fairly straightforward, then I'll definitely be pushing it yeah. as much as possible. Just because I want some real numbers. 62 is not going to cut it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I bet you if somebody paid me from... May 1st, or let's say April 15th to August 1st, every day to go count grizzlies, I guarantee you I could count 63 different bears. Yeah, you could probably count one every few days. Yep. If if the, if you're just looking for them? Yes. By any means necessary? Yeah, we've got friends in the oil field who take photos of them all the time. Yep. They'll say three bears, four bears you know, big boar by itself and, and just all the time. 
And that's all in that Swan Hills region, mm -hmm. right between here and Whitecourt. Well, and I know some people that farm right on the edge of the big hills. Okay. And uh, I actually had a horse there uh, on a buddy's farm, and I was talking to the guy last summer, and I said, so you guys still got lots of grizzlies? Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he's like uh, like 17 or 18. He's like, all, all my life, grizzlies every year. Wow. In their fields, right? Yeah. They come down. They, they got elk and all kinds of sh nice shit, too, but... Every like he just it was no big deal. Like I was all excited, like oh you guys got grizzlies. He's like yeah, all the time. They're always here, every, yeah. but right on the Swan Hills corner there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully we don't run into anything this year. You know, it's always a a little eerie when they're around, but it's something you just got to deal with and can't let it you know deter you from hunting. Um, you just got to be prepared, right? You got to yeah. have bear spray and. Or have a have a gun with you and and be ready at all times. Yeah, I I don't know. It's it's like with anything, right? If you're if you're scared to get in a car accident, don't drive. If you're scared to get eaten by a bear, don't don't go in the woods. Yeah. Because the risk. If you're scared to get bitten by a fish, don't go swimming. Because there's gonna be some risk, but the the risk versus the reward and the experience is just so well. And if you're and right? if you really are that you know scared about it that it's bothering you mentally you can't think straight when something mm -hmm. does go down yeah you know um so yeah you know you you gotta you almost gotta expect <laughs> it and just be prepared and um, that's the way like i i and hunting with some new people in the mountains i've sort of learned that not everybody or most people aren't as comfortable as i am in yeah. the woods maybe and, and it seems like nighttime gets a lot of people, right? Like sleeping in a tent. Nighttime is a very, like, it's it's weird how our our brains sort of change at yeah. night. And the way we see things and the way we think. The way you think. The way we talk to each other at night. Everything's different. Yeah. Well, and it's, yeah, it's like evolution of yeah. trying not to get killed by something. That's what it is. Yeah. Like at nighttime. Like as soon as it goes night, well, a perfect example we were looking for Braden's bear. Yes. We're all talking, normal voice, blah, 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 blah. And then it got yeah. like pitch black. Yeah. And it was like, why are we whisk everybody's whispering? Yeah. Like we're we're looking for a dead bear and everybody's whispering to each other. Yeah. And it's just it just comes natural. Yeah. Just because it's like, oh, it's quiet. Let's it's dark. Let's be quiet. But uh yeah, I know I find that like sleeping outside in a tent, for me, it's just like, like I I've I've hunted with guys that I gotta have earplugs in my ears or I can't sleep. And I've I've hunted with guys that are like, no, don't don't even say earplug. If I have my ears plugged, I'll never go to sleep. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then there's people that's just like put my head on the pillow, conked, I sleep better in the mountains than I do at home. And that's kind of how I am. Like after the first night and I've sort of like got the my back stiff enough to lay on the ground kind of thing, then yeah. I'm I'm good to go. And I I just I have laid there many nights and just oh, what was that? Hear a stick break, or that sounds like footprints, or you know, the wind shakes the tree funny, and you're like, Oh, that sounds odd. But I just, <laughs> yeah, I it's just like, you know what, you're sitting in a tent, if something's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, yeah. And I mean, the tent's probably a best place because you're hidden, a bear's probably just gonna like i don't know unless you're smoking jerky in your tent mm -hmm. the bear's not just gonna come and pile drive you and rip you out of there and blah 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 blah. he's probably gonna press his nose up against the tent and maybe scrape at it and you know if you're prepared you should <clears throat> should have some time to react some some way yeah um but it's, there's just a, a a level of accepting it like are you scared of bears yeah but what are you gonna do yeah, there, there's been like, a few. Yeah, I don't want to get where, eaten, but like, yeah. what are you gonna do? Yeah, you can't, you can't wreck yourself mentally over it. And um, and solo's tough because you don't oh, have a buddy sure. to rely on, and if, if shit gets a little eerie, you don't have somebody to talk to. And, yeah. And uh, I found for solo hunting, having a camera helps because then I just like, it's like I draw a face on the camera and yeah. just talk to talk to the camera for sure. And, so have you done a lot of solo like? backpacking beside by, by yourself yeah camping in the bush yeah yeah i i that's intense, mo man. most of it because i just don't have there's not always somebody that can go yeah. and I just, when i want to go i just go and uh so i've you know i've done i've done a few short trips in the mountains like three days two nights and 
And sleeping is is the least of my worries. Once I'm in my tent, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm in my own little Okay, safe so you're space. fine with it, yeah. But walking. Oh, yeah. Like walking through the woods. Yeah. Like I, when we went sheep hunting two years ago, Katie got hurt real bad. So we came down, rearranged everything, and I went back up solo. And I got to a point where we got to this little choke point on the trail. And like the trail was really nice and open, big timber. You could see... Um, you know, if you're going to run into a bear, you're going to see it from a long ways away. <clears throat> but then you get to this choke point and it just turns into like, you go from steep kind of just climbing up through the, through the poplars to this big flat open meadow. And there's like thick timber on the left of you and thick timber on the right of you. And there's two creeks on either side. And then it's just a thin meadow that was burned out and the creeks never burned. That's why the thick timbers are. And I just remember walking up, for the first time through there and just thinking this is like if there was gonna be a place where a grizzly just comes charging out of nowhere like this is it like just beautiful golden meadows flowers like and then just like dark timber on either side and only about like 150 yards across yeah. and i'm here i'm just walking through the yeah. middle of it and so what i do sometimes like i wasn't hunting like that was a sheep hunt so i was just gaining elevation i wasn't planning on creeping up on a deer or anything so i just put a podcast yeah played it sure. on my phone on my yeah. speaker out loud okay and that just it kept me sane enough to the point where i i broke out of that that meadow and i was back into normal timber yeah. and i was like okay hey, i'm good yeah it's like something about it though just gives you like makes the hair on your neck For stand sure. up yeah no i've you know definitely been in a situation solo elk hunting and you know you see bear tracks all over the place and uh, the one morning i was hiking down into the valley i was by myself and i spooked up a, a bedded black bear and there, there hasn't been known to be any grizzly bears in there so it wasn't necessarily grizzly bears i was worried about but you know running into a sow with cubs or something like that right and um yeah it's you know you just gotta just remind yourself you know i do this this is why i do it yeah. because i love being out in nature you never know what you're gonna so, see i gotta be ready if something does so i'm holding the gun yeah i think i was holding a gun um but yeah, you know, one thing in particular, like when I go into the bait site, I can hear my heartbeat. <laughs> oh yeah. And you like and, feel and it. And it's not necessarily because I'm worried about a grizzly charging me or anything like that. It's because I don't know what's going to be around the corner mm. when I get to that bait. Yeah. Cause when I bait, I usually, do you go in quiet? When I'm taking bait? Yeah. Loud. You go in loud. On purpose. <clears throat> Jeez, Dinner no, it's bell. It's been so long. I don't even remember. Dinner but. bell. So when yeah. I bait, I like to, if I can, like, well, some of them we can ride a quad in, some of yeah. them we can't. So when I can ride a quad in, I always leave a quad running. That's something I learned from an old guy I used to guide for. And yeah. it's, it's a dinner bell, man. Yeah. They know that, they hear that engine sitting in the bait site. They're just going to come. And I've had it so many times where you're standing on your quad, hanging a beaver and a bear just yeah. slowly starts creeping in. So yeah, when I'm going in by myself to bait, I can hear my heartbeat. Yeah. Just because you're so tuned in with everything. And, and every time. And you're, hopefully that never goes away. Every time, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if a squirrel moves, you can hear it and you know exactly where it's coming from. Um, so but, what do you you tell yourself? Just like, be ready. Yeah. Good to go. Yeah, for sure. You know, like, and usually, you know, I'm hauling something like buns in or oats yeah. or something like that, right? So you got... Yeah, I, I usually have something on the shoulder that I'm hauling in, and then my my gun, my 12 gauge on the other hand, and uh, yeah, you can hear that heartbeat. But when I'm with someone else, you know, we're talking back and forth, and and we're both bear aware, but um, it's not as intense. Well, and you just have that there, feeling like yeah, he, you know, if something happens, at least there's two of there's us. a second chance. Yeah, yeah, it's like buddy's got my back, right? Yeah, my I don't know. I always think. Like, my most nervous time is probably elk hunting with a bow. Okay. Like, and it's probably because it's such long days. Yeah. It's so many days in a row. Mm -hmm. You see so many bears and cougars and yeah, whatever else. And so it's just like, that's like after 10, 12 days and ran into a few bears and stuff. It's just like, just certain moments in the day, it's like, oh, like this feels like if I ran into something, it could be really Yeah, bad you news. see, man, and me, I feel like I let my guard down when I'm elk hunting. When I'm elk hunting and moose hunting, I'm not thinking about bears very much. But with elk, for me, it's because I'm walking in the bush on the trails. Yeah. When I'm moose hunting, 
I don't have a care in the world because I'm planted, I'm sitting, and I'm waiting for an animal that's bigger than a piece of plywood. Yeah. When I'm elk hunting, though, I'm like, I am sneaking through. I'm being yeah. quiet, and I sound like prey. Yeah, for sure. And that's what that's what yeah. sort of messes with me after a few days. And then I tell, but what I tell myself is like, guys have done this since the beginning of time, and I personally don't know a single guy that's been eaten by a bear. And that's what I think too. And I think I the like, same. What thing are the chances that I'm like gonna that. be the guy? The chances are very slim, and I'm prepared for this if yeah. something does happen, right? Well, and then I and then you, yeah, and you can keep thinking, what if, what if, what if, what if? But you just have to get to the point where you just go, well, if it happens, it happens. Yeah, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather get mauled by a bear. Hopefully, it's quick, than get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> And die from COVID. If you know, yeah, I already had COVID. I think, but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I had it too. At one, you know, point, like but... there's just, it's what I love to do. It's it's like you know, you live to fly airplanes. If you if you crash, you crash. That's it's what you lived for, right? Yeah. What a better way to go. More people are right? uh, dying driving on the highway. So yeah, exactly. Don't, you even, don't even think you know. About you're it. the captain of a ship. You go down with your ship. That's yeah. just. That's like the way your world world was written. Yeah. Right. And that's same for me. Like I, I am a hunter. I'm a guide. I just that's what I like to do. Well, as as a hunter, you know, as you get older, <clears throat> you know, as you get older and older and older, if you can hunt till the last day of your life, if that's the way I go, that'd be the best. So my uncle, just six months ago, killed a deer, had a heart attack. And died right there in the spot hauling his deer out. Holy shit. You know, and that guy there, like he ran the Fish and Game Association for the province he was in. And wow. he was like, that was his life. Yeah. You know, he shot, he did uh, um, the trap shooting and all that sort of stuff. He went down to the States and he lived and breathed shooting and hunting. And that's how he went. No better way to go. You know, and, and that was it, right? Like he got to an age where... You know something might happen like you get there and and um yeah you know you kill a deer right that was the last hour and but, um like is there a better way is there a better way yeah and, and that's the way i thought because i'm you know there's not many hunters in my family and that's the way i i sort of mentioned to them i said hey guys like you know i don't think there's a better way for him right like i know personally if i'm in my 80s or would be different it is, if it was like 70s if it was like hey grandpa i know you never hunted before but uh, you're getting old let's go and, and then you the kill poor him bastard dies. yeah <laughs> then it's then it's a little different right but, but this if he guy lives and breathes by himself it. kills a deer right every year he does this um so yeah, you know, if there's better, I, I don't know of a better way. Right, right than where, that. right where you belong. Exactly. Right? Well, let's wrap her up, man. That that uh, that was long? a good podcast. Yeah, we're at like a ninety minutes or so. Right on. So that's the grizzly bears, guys. There's a lot of them around. A lot more than we're being told, from what I, I'm thinking. Yeah, I would. Uh, I just don't like that number. It's sixty-two. Yeah, I can't believe they only thought there was well, they and, only and nine hundred. Say there's fifteen percent or ten percent more. Sixty-two in our area, in our stomping grounds, and then nine hundred across the province. Yeah. I just have a very, very hard time with that number. And and understandably, like they're not saying that. I they kind of are, but they're not saying that is all there is in Alberta. It to the best of their counting ability. Yeah, that's what they came up with. Yeah, but it's just not good enough. No, it's not a good enough number. To start doing stuff with, right? Because in eleven years we've gained an average of a hundred bears. That doesn't make yeah. Any sense. And you know, guys, you can write to these people like Nixon. You can get his email, and if you see ten grizzly bears a year, take photos of them, send them to these guys. Hey, I've seen a grizzly bear down every road I'm bear hunting. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Let and them if, know. If anybody wants to check out that article, um, it was called Positive P A W S I T I V E. Grizzly bear Perfect. news or population, something like that, okay. on the Alberta.ca website. Fantastic. Jason so. Nixon shared it on his Facebook today. Yeah, and we'll be running our Reconico trail cameras at all of our baits. Most of our baits will send us the photos to our phone. So if we get any grizzlies, we're going to post them up on our on our page, on our story for everyone to see. 
and uh, they are magnificent, magnificent animals. And, uh, you know, I hope we have them around for a long time. I hope we're able to manage their populations so they don't start costing our government money and the other we can thing, make money from this. The other thing, um, just to add, we didn't talk about the fact that BC got shut down and they're our neighbors. And there's a lot of grizzly bears. And the bears don't care what side of the freaking no. line they're living on. No. No. So, th- so the western province of Alberta, um, you know, the eastern prov- side of BC, those bears were getting managed, you know, forever. Pretty heavily. Until about four years ago Pretty or well. so, right? Yeah. And so um, now they aren't, and they haven't been for four or five years now. So, you know, there's there's a lot of bears. Um and it's it's like it's it's just foothills. Yeah. Once you get north of the Rockies, there it's just they can just walk down a logging road and come across the province. Yeah. And they and and I guided up there right along the border, and there's lots of grizzlies. Lots of grizzlies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be neat to, to hunt one in our home province one day. Yep. Well, hopefully, hopefully, we all have to wait that long to shoot one. Yeah. And it's that doesn't happen before yeah. it's legal in self defense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You because, don't want that. Yeah, you, you never want to kill anything in self defense unless you actually absolutely have to. But if you have to, you have to. If if it gets to that, you got to do what you got to do to survive. Doggy dog. And you are more important than that animal. Yeah. Um, you know, team people. That's that, what we're on. That being said, do the right thing and report it. Yeah, for sure. Because everyone you report, it helps. Um, it helps our cause. It helps the grizzly bears. You know, if those grizzly bears are being managed, we're gonna have less run-ins with with people. Um, you know, you're gonna probably see better ungulate populations too, because um, that's one thing we might see with these two years now of no guiding black bears is an influx of black bears, and now. Um, a damper on our, our moose and they've they're doing really well right now yeah our moose well are doing they very have well. been you yeah. know last year they were but last yeah. year was the first year that we didn't have that yeah. that bear season so now we might see if this goes on this spring it can't go on next spring it just can't mm-hmm. um but we might see you know come next year um an issue with with moose like they might put a damper on them for yeah. sure we've been fortunate with a mild winter so it, hopefully it, it yeah. maintains balance. The mild winter, it doesn't want to go away. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's sure stringing us along. Yeah, it really is. I I tried putting some baits out here. I don't know if I, I don't think I mentioned it yet in the podcast, but I tried putting some baits out this past weekend, and got to the one bait. Ended up dragging the barrel in. <clears throat> tried to get two more out. Ended up just burying the quad in four feet of snow. Absolute mess. We were out there. Me, Amy, and Jackson, my or my oldest. He's six years old. We were out there for like seven hours and we spent four hours digging our machines out of the snow. <laughs> it was just crazy. So we'll try again next week, uh, see if we can get a few more out. And uh, yeah, guys, keep following along on our uh, Facebook page, our Instagram page. Um, you know, now that bear season is here and we're starting to get baits out um, and we're going to start hunting those baits. We're going to be putting up a ton of photos, um, you know, in future podcasts here, we're going to have a ton of bear stories to talk about and, um, yeah, a lot of fun to be had in the next <laughs> six to eight weeks. <clears throat> it's about to get busy. Yeah. I can't wait, man. Can't wait. It's been, uh, too long. Yeah. And one thing too, guys, the Reconico trail cameras, we convinced those guys to give every single one of our followers 15% off a cellular trail camera. Now, they've worked with other shows, and typically they give a 10% discount, but I said, you know what? You got to give us more. You got to give our guys more than 10, so they are giving a 15% discount code, um, 15% discount off the Scout HD trail camera. That's their cellular trail camera that takes 22 megapixel pixel photos um 1080p videos and um yeah use promo code non-typical at uh, reconicooutdoors.com i believe anyways you can check out reconico outdoors on facebook and instagram but they have great great cellular cameras and uh yeah you can save big there so yeah they work fantastic on the wolf bait very happy with that yeah yeah you had some 
nice wolves there. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't kill any, but no. next season. Yeah, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, well, the goal was to get some photos this year. I got, yeah, I got some photos. So thanks. Shout out to Raconico. I uh, also want to <coughs> shout out. Well, I want to mention that there is a few spring bear packages available through Primal Outfitting. Yeah. So that is uh, two bears per person, six day hunt. You're throwing in two bears. Two bears. Everybody gets two bears. One. Everybody gets two bears. There's wow. no trophy fee. There's no skinning fee. You come, you no get trophy two. fee. So there, so you're paying a price for the package. You get handed two tags. We go hunting for two bears. You kill the first <laughs> bear on the first day. Pretty damn good. We hunt man. the rest of the week for the second one. You kill both bears on the last day. It's totally up to you. Yeah. Probably average between three and a dozen bears a day. Spot and stock, no baiting zone, high color phase, very high opportunity rate. You're looking at, you know, next to guaranteeing you a mature bear. Yeah. Um, you get a hundred percent opportunity on the first bear, um, ninety on the second, and uh, there's gonna be an opportunity to fish here in Lesser Slave Lake because we're nice and close to town. So if the weather permits, um, take some guys fishing early in the morning. Before there you hunt. go, fishing in the morning and right around noon or one o'clock, you can sneak out for. Yeah. You know, it's light till 11 o'clock at night, yeah, so yeah, you we're still hunting got 10, 11 midnight. hours yeah. of hunting after you're fishing. Yeah, yeah, you just can't fish all day. Spring bear is too long, or you can't, sorry, you can't hunt all day. The season, the day's just too long, and that early morning period, there's only about two hours where bears are really active first thing in the morning, and that's like 4, 5, yeah, 6 a.m., <laughs> right? So if, if guys want to go in that morning, we'll go. Yeah. But then you got to come back, have a few hours of sleep so that you can go for the rest of the next 12 hours. Yeah, because you're going to have that 10 hours. It's just prime. I was looking back at uh, some video I was editing from our bear camp and we were climbing down from the stand at like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Just because it was light to like 1040 or having whatever Having dinner at 1 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so you know, it's super long days. And the thing is like. When we do our spot and stock bear hunting, like with Amy, we'll go out one or two days a week. Yeah. And we'll usually get, like, we'll find a nice bear usually by the second week. And you see. But if you're going yeah. for six days straight, yeah. you know, you're going to see a few bears and yeah. you're going to have some good chances. Most bears I've ever seen in one day is 14. Wow. So, so two bears, um, is it rifle, bow? Either or, we, either or. If you want to, if you're if you're competent archery shooter, um, I love to take guys spot and stock archery hunting. Um, that's lots of fun. You could take your safety bear with the rifle first. Absolutely, and and yeah. So if you're an archery hunter, I recommend highly recommend bringing both, because if something you don't want to walk away is, you don't yeah you don't want to walk away is at a long range, kill it. Um, the other thing is yeah you get two bears. So what I always tell guys is. Kill that first bear you know you're going to be happy with, and then we'll hunt for that second bear. Now, don't kill a small one. Don't kill the first one we see. Don't kill one you're hemming and hawing about. I'm never going to tell you to kill one, period. But if something turns your crank, shoot it, and we'll look for something special, the, 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 the unique one after. Well, you got two tags. So you're and there, and you're not spending any extra money. Yeah. So punch both tags. Yeah. Please do. We got too <laughs> many of these freaking things running around. That's awesome. Man, that sounds like a killer deal. It's awesome. And wall tent camp, everything's home cooked meals. Um, is this is a COVID you know special right now. Yeah, it's COVID Canadian resident special. So we're looking at <laughs> looking at five thousand for the package for one person. That's two bears, fishing, meals, transport from Edmonton or Grand Prairie. You basically don't have to spend a dime unless you're a beer drinker, and uh, and that's that. And oh, so they can just fly to the airport, and I'll pick in them Edmonton up in Edmonton or Grand yeah. Prairie, or they could drive right to you, or you could drive right to Slave Lake and leave your vehicle in a at my yard in a secure place and and yeah. go to camp. Um, mention the podcast if you're gonna book, and I'll give another discount for another discount in there. <laughs> Pretty damn good, man. Right on. But right uh, on. yeah, there's lots of bears to kill, so. Let's let's get some guys up here. Yeah. There's lots of fish to catch too. Yeah. Sweet. Right on. Maybe we'll even get them on the podcast. There you go. <laughs> no, I don't want to end it for you. You guys got a lot of hunting to do if you oh, got two whatever. bears to kill. There's lots of stories to tell though. <laughs> yeah. There's always lots of stories in bear camp. Right on, guys. Well, thanks so much for listening. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if you're just listening, 
Um, all these podcasts are now on YouTube with some video. Um, so yeah, check that out, guys. And remember, subscribe on Facebook, Instagram. Um, our new TV show or the new season of our TV show is coming out in a few months here this summer. It'll be out. Um, we've got a lot of bear action. We've been talking about bear all night, and we've got a lot of bear action on this new season. So don't miss that. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for, li- for listening. Bye-bye.